What's up guys, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be hacking our way to domain admin starting from just a spreadsheet. It's going to get a bit crazy, it's going to get a bit all over the place, but it's going to be rad. Let's get straight to it. Okay, so let's set the stage for this attack, shall we? We have a target domain, it's called canary.local, it's a domain that I created here in my lab. We have a domain controller and then a workstation that is connected to the domain. This is going to be our initial access target. We're going to gain control of the laptop and then we're going to move over into the domain controller, okay? Hopefully getting domain admin access on the domain controller. That's our goal. We want to own the domain, we need domain admin access on the controller. Okay, so to do that, we're going to use two pieces of exploitation software. Number one, we are going to use Metasploit and then we are going to use PowerShell Empire. This is just the way that I like to do this attack, um, but the principles can most probably be applied to other pieces of kit that you use. So let's open up Metasploit. The first thing we're going to do is set up our agent handler. Um, I've already set up the, the listening host IP. This is just a VPS sitting in London. I've got the port that I'm listening on is 80 and we have the standard interpreter reverse TCP payload. Nothing special. Let's run that. Close that over there. Another thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you the payload that we're serving. I'll explain in a moment why we're doing it this way. So here you can see on the same server, there's the IP address up there, I'm hosting this reverse shell.cmd. If I show it to you, it's just a bunch of encoded stuff. It's a standard Metasploit payload. Nothing fancy for this POC. Then you're going to serve this using Py a Python HTTP server. This used to be called Simple HTTP Server back in the day. Um, there we go. Port 8080. Okay, so let's go to our workstation, Bob's machine. Okay. As you can see, here is a little spreadsheet on here. So you can imagine that somebody sent this to him over email saying, please review the budget. The CEO needs this now. Get it done ASAP. That's usually how these things go. So Bob's going to go ahead, double click this, open up, say yes for some odd reason. By the way, we can hide this. I just put that up there for a POC sex. That was just a bunch of our malicious code executing. Okay. So Let's go have a look at our Metasploit session and then I will get back to the spreadsheet in a minute. Aha, there we go. We have a shell open, okay? This is a reverse shell. This means we have complete control over this person's machine. You can see we're, our username is Bob on the Canary domain. We can check our internal IP address, 192.168.1.109. This is great. Now, let's quickly pause there. What just happened? Okay, let me explain to you what just happened. Let's open up the spreadsheet. Let's go to the developer tab. Let's have a look at the macros and look over here. So if you have a look at this macro, it's this very, very simple piece of code. You can see we sent a get request to our malicious server looking for that rev underscore shell uh, payload that I showed you guys earlier. Then it's just going to write it and then it's going to execute that as with as higher permissions as possible. Okay. And that's about it for there. Let's have a look and start owning this domain, shall we? Okay, so first things first, okay? We want to get a process list, see what's running on Bob's machine. We want to migrate into a, 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 a more stable process. I am going to quickly look for SVC host. There we go. So he's going to type migrate 6104. Four, that's great. Now Metasploit's just going to take our malicious process and inject it into SVC host. Okay. That's all it does. Okay. And there we go. We're done there. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to move our session from Metasploit to PowerShell Empire. Okay. Um, I'll show you why in a minute. I just like the way that PowerShell Empire executes the attack that we're going to perform just now. So we're just going to set up another listener. We we'll use the HTTP payload. We will set the host to our IP address and set the port to 443, say execute, and then we're going to create another payload that we're going to execute on Bob's machine. Okay. So we're going to go back, use stager in PowerShell Empire, they're called stages, not payloads. Um, and we're going to use the windows launcher underscore bat. Um, let's have a look at all the info that you can see here. Okay, so we need to set the listener that this payload needs to talk back to. Let's use the, whoops. 
HTTP listener we set up. Look, we can obfuscate it and do all of that stuff here, but we're not gonna do that for this POC. And plus, if you're gonna be obfuscating these payloads, you're gonna be doing it manually, not uh, relying on a tool to do it because it will get caught by antivirus or EDR. And you can see it's written it to the temp folder. I actually don't wanna do that. Let's just set the out file to home Russell W documents malware and give it a name launcher whoops launcher dot bat looks good execute great let's just put that on the back burner let's open up metasploit again we want to change our working directly just to make things a little bit easier okay cd user whoops cd might help if i actually type the directory name in properly right cd bob what is up with my typing today i think i've had way too much coffee i, I honestly think that's what it is now let's upload our recently created payload Yeah. Now we're uploading it to the documents folder, pwd, we're still in documents, Let's open up a shell, then we're going to go cmd.exe forward slash k launcher.bat. Okay, look, and the best way to kind of view this is that we're just moving our session from Metasploit to PowerShell Empire to complete some tasks, okay? Let's open up Empire. Great, now we can start nailing this domain controller. But before we do that, we need to know what's the domain controller, what's its IP address, what's its name. We're gonna do that right now. You're gonna interact with your agent. Okay, you're gonna use module, situational awareness, power, power view, Oops. get domain. Controller. You know, this has some options, but you don't have to actually set it for what we want to do. It's going to hit execute and then it's going to talk to Bob's machine and say, I need the domain controller's information. And Bob's machine is going to go, oh, Okay, that's fine. Here you go. There it is. And then there we go. There it is. We can see the forest names canary.local, the IP address is that, dot 1.99, and then the name is canary dc. That's very important. Okay, so now we're going to actually start attacking. We're going to be doing what's called a, a DC synchronization attack. Basically what that is, is we're tricking the domain controller into thinking our compromised host is a domain controller as well. So we want the domain controller to, to give Bob's machine all of the information. We want the hashes, we want the username, we want all of that. So we're going to do that right now. You're going to use module credentials DC sync underscore hash dump over there. Okay, let, now we might have some we might have some parameters to set. Actually, no, we don't. We don't have to set anything. We can hit execute, and then we can go for it. Okay. Now, for a number of this is bad. I mean, for obvious reasons. But basically, you can hit a domain controller provided your user has the right permissions. We'll get into that at the end of the video, and we'll get all of this information that we see over here, okay? We have the administrator account, the KRBTGT account. That's great for performing golden tickets attacks. That's a great persistence attack on a network. You have the enterprise admin account, you have Bob, and you have Ty's, Ty ADM, okay? We're gonna concentrate on enterprise admin, okay? That seems like a very interesting account, okay? So let's copy the hash, okay? And let's go back. Now we're gonna use a module a lateral movement module within PowerShell Empire, okay, called SMB exec. Okay, let's hit info. Okay, this is going to be a simple pass the hash attack. Okay, so we need we have a couple of parameters we need to set. I'm going to set the computer name to canary dash dc. We found that out earlier. Set the username to enterprise admin or ENT admin. Set the hash to the hash that we just grabbed earlier set the domain to canary dot local that's fine set another listener so we'll use the same listener that we initially set up because how this works is it authenticates the target then drops a payload and then it talks back to our listener okay 
So we've set everything that we need to do. Let's execute that. And now we wait. There we go. There we go. We've got another agent. Let's have a look at this. Cool. The machine name that we've compromised is the canary-dc and we can see here we have system level access on the domain controller. That's tickets. We're done. This, the, the domain's done for. We can pack up. We're good. Okay. But I want to quickly have some fun. I want to show you guys something else. Something a little bit more real world, okay? In a lot of networks, domain controllers and the, the crown jewels are segmented off. They may not have internet access. And how this attack is currently looking is we have our machine sitting in the cloud that has a direct shell to Bob's laptop. And because of the SMB exec command that we ran, we have a direct line to the domain controller. But what happens if the domain controller hasn't got internet and they blocked it off from the rest of the world, which is a good practice to do. But what do, what do we do? How do we get to the domain controller from Bob's machine? That is called pivoting, my friends. And I'm going to quickly show you that now. I think we should have some fun. Okay, let me show you how we do that. So we can actually close up PowerShell Empire. Let's go back to Metasploit. Close that up. We don't need that anymore. Let's background the session. Take note of the session ID here, okay? That's very, very important. We're going to set up two modules quickly, okay? Uh, use, post, multi, manage, auto root, show options. We're going to set the session of this to the session that we have open, well, the, the session that we backgrounded. Type the word exploit. This is just creating a route from our machine to that host. Very simple. Then we're going to use another thing called auxiliary server. And it's a socks for a proxy. Let's show options. Let me move this down to the middle so you can see. So we're going to set SRV host to our local host IP address. Set the port, SRV port. To 9050. Why are we using that port? Because we're going to use proxy chains to connect to the SOX4 proxy, and 9050 is the default port that proxy chains use. Users hit exploit, and you can see it starts at our SOX4 proxy server. So let's open up another terminal, okay? Let's actually use the other terminal we used here. There we go. Let's open that up. Okay, clear that. We're going to change directory into the directory of Impacket. It's a great Python library of some some Windows attacks that you can use. There we go. Impacket examples. There we go. Great. So let me show you our proxy chains configuration as well. By the way, oh, oops. cat sc slash proxy chains. You can see here it's the it's the local host IP address and then your nine zero five zero port. Okay, fairly simple. Clear, clear this. Okay, now we're going to start our command off with proxy chains to tell, to say we're basically telling the machine everything you do needs to run through our proxy chain configuration file. Okay, then we're going to use Python smb exec. Okay, and then we're going to start specifying our information. So canary.local t admin. Okay, whoops. We're going to use those, these credentials, okay? Then at 192.168.1.99, and then use hashes. So the 1.99, that is the IP address of our compromised domain controller. But let's get that hash again that we got. Copy the hash, put it over here. Paste it in there. Didn't, looks good to me. You see, hit enter. You can see that. There we go. Our our connection was initiated. This is going to be a bit slow, okay? Because you're basically sending the request from our Kali machine in the cloud down to Bob's laptop or workstation, whatever it is, and then it's going to send that request to the domain controller. As you can see, we have a shell. Who are we running as? We should be running as system on the machine, but let's just quickly check. It does take a bit of time. When you're doing this, you might want to go get some coffee or something to drink in between. There we go. We're running 
as system on the domain controller and this allows you to access machines that are air gapped or, or don't have internet access or whatever the case may be if you can't reach them from where you are you're going to use a machine that can see them and execute your attacks going forward from here so I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun putting it together. I really enjoy doing content like this. So if you want more like this, please let me know down in the comment section and I will gladly put it together. In the meantime, we are busy with a rad series called Defense Against the Dark Arts where we are going to be showing you how to defend and detect attacks just like this. It's going to be great. It's a multi-video series. I'm super excited to get it out to you guys. So. Stay tuned by hitting that subscribe button and smashing that like button and have yourselves a rad day. Thanks.